All right, and finally, in this section, we can now use what we know about fractions and, and um, reducing them to decide whether they are equivalent or not. Now remember, equivalent fractions represented the same portion of the whole. And in order to see that, they need to be fully reduced so that we can see. Okay, let's look at these first two here. We have 14 sixteenths and 35 over 40. Well, let's reduce down each one of these and we'll see um, what we can do. Now, I'm going to just use the dividing technique. So let's see, what can we divide 14 by and also divide 16 by it? Well, that would be a 2. 2 will divide into 14 7 times, and 2 will divide into 16 8 times. So this fraction reduces to 7 eighths. Now let's look at the 35 over 40. I know that 5 goes into both of them. 5 will go into 35 7 times, and 5 will go into 40 8 times. So this fraction reduced is 7 eighths. These two things are equal, so this tells us that these are equivalent fractions. Let's look at another example. Here we have 15 over 24 and 35 over 52. Well, looking at 15 and 24, 2 won't go into both of them. 3 will. 3 will go into 15 5 times, and 3 will go into 24 8 times. So we can reduce that fraction to 5 over 8. Now what about the 35 over 52? Well, 2 won't go into them. 3 will not go into them. 3 plus 5 is 8, and that's not divisible by 3. Remember our divisibility tests. 5 won't go into both of them. Um, oh, I missed 4. 4 won't go into 35. Um, 10 won't go into both of them. There's really nothing that will divide into 35 and 52 at the same time. This is fully reduced. Oops, let me change my color here. 35 over 52. There's nothing in common that we can cancel out. So we're done. Now looking at 5 eighths and 35 over 52, these are not equivalent. When you put a slash mark through the equal sign, that means not equal to. These are not equal to each other, therefore they are not equivalent.